All right, that is what we're going to talk about today. Leadership and integrity and violence, political intolerance, and the youth and how far they go. You've heard for yourself the youth saying that tit for tat is a fair game. But is it really a fair game? Are they even on the same level, the political elite? Well, my guest already in studio, Amina Mohammed. Amina Mailun Mohammed is a final year law student at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, where she has previously served as the Secretary General of the Kenya Model United Nation and is the current president of the Law Student Society of Kenya. She's the founder of Elimisha Foundation as well, an organization that aims to enhance literacy and creativity in young people through mentorship and peer learning. Like I told you, very interesting youthful panel today. Rafael Obonya is also with us. He's a public policy and youth specialist, a diplomat, an author, and a speaker as well. Rafael Obonya is a multi-award winning youth advocate at the national, regional, international levels. He's the author of Conversations About the Youth in Kenya. We'll be indulging him to find out what exactly the youth are doing in Kenya and the violence that's being experienced. And last but not least, You've seen her several times. Nerima Wako is here. Nerima attained a bachelor's degree in journalism and sociology in 2010 from Jacksonville State University and a master's degree in public administration from the same administration. Right now, she's the executive director of Siasa Place, which is a youth organization established in 2015, dedicated to collaboratively create an environment that enables youth of Kenya to directly engage with the political mainstream in a meaningful way. And that is actually where we start, Nerima Wako. Are the youth engaging in the political mainstream in a good way? Because you've seen what has happened. And there are several, in fact, I want to read some of them. We have been sifting through them because some of them are a bit warlike. <laughs> Stephen Kabora <laughs> says, where are we headed to as the youth? This is totally unacceptable. And Makala Nicodemus says, those who did that are hooligans. But at the same time, you had the youth themselves saying that we to Leona Vilo Alifanya president Uko. So to Kasema Opio is young gapa. Tit for tat is a fair game. Are the youth losing direction here? That's a tough question, Trevor. Um, it's very difficult because when we think of youth, we clamp them into one group. And here we have a group of youth who did something. That's not right. But we also forget that there are several young people who are doing amazing things in our country. But we choose to forget that and focus on the negative when something negative comes up. This election is heated. There's a lot of tension. So you're going to have political rivalry. Was it right? Absolutely not. Are we heading in the right direction in terms of that? No, I don't think that we are. This is not the way to solve issues. It's not. Just because you've seen someone behaving badly, it's not tit for tat and eye for an eye. We're above that. So I would like to say that the leaders should actually speak to the young people. Because when you see something like that, instead of encouraging it, just because you saw it happen somewhere else and encouraging your peers to stand out and support your you know, political leader by doing the same thing is absolutely wrong. And it's something that I do not support myself. What I don't understand is how the youth have this relation to the political elite. They think that since <laughs> Walifanyiwa Ivo Uko, now it's our turn to defend them here. And yet they realize, they, do they realize that there's, such, there's a world of a difference between themselves and the political elite? Yes. Because we've seen even on Twitter here, there are some of them who are saying this is how war starts, things like that. And meaning they're speaking from just having seen what the political scene is like. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but I think it's something that's going to change over time. It's not all youth who think that way. And it's not right to clamp all youth as one cluster. But the simple fact that we have these young people who seem to relate with these political leaders that, quite frankly, we have nothing in common. They're of a different class. They have employment. They have families. Then they're quite settled. But you have these young people who have no employment, nothing to eat for the next day. But here they are standing in the front line defending these leaders. So it's time for young people to actually wake up and realize that they need to identify leaders who have their interest at heart, okay. not these ones who support such action, actions. Raphael, what is your reaction when you saw, when you saw what was happening in the quite, political scene? I, I mean, uh, thanks for hosting us. Uh, it's quite unfortunate to see young people engage in, um, in violence. Uh, and in, in act of political violence. And I, I, I think it reminds me, especially the, the issue of tit for tat, it reminds me of what Mahatma Gandhi said, that uh, 
uh, an eye for an eye will only leave us with a society of uh, blind, blind, blind people. people. And so it's very dangerous for us to engage in violence in retaliation of what we saw. I think as young people we need to think differently, we need to act, uh, to act differently. I think our generation must break away from the old way of doing politics, use of violence uh, I mean, to, as a form of expression. I think it's unacceptable and violence has no space in electoral process. In fact, it undermines our democracy. Uh, I mean, looking at 2007, 2008, no one can claim ignorance of the cost of violence to, uh, you know, human rights, human dignity, progress, you know. And it does not just affect people who are engaging in violence, it affects mm -hmm. all of us. And so I think the earlier we realize that, uh, uh, the better. And so young people, I think, should provide a new vision for Kenya, a new way of doing things. But I also want to agree with um, uh, uh, Nerima that uh, there are many remarkable young people who are doing amazing work, who are building a new narrative. They might not be as loud as the chants that we saw, but there are many young people who are doing amazing stuff just to get young people to participate more meaningfully and in a more informed, uh, informed way. Yeah. So I think we shouldn't give up just of, because of the incidences. Uh, yeah. In fact, we should highlight more of what uh, positive initiatives by young people yeah. because that, I think, is what is going to change uh, attitudes and uh, the culture of violence, uh, political violence in this country. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what is the immediate reaction when you see the youth behaving like that? Because they also fail to realize that in the event of any violence, the same political elite they're defending are the first ones to be whisked away before drama <laughs> begins. <laughs> now they're left there with the police. I mean, it's worrying to see young people taking it to the streets because a president was heckled in another area and now they're treating the other presidential candidate the same way. I wish they were heckling because he was not addressing issues that are important to us like youth unemployment, the rate of corruption. That in itself should be a worrying factor, but we should also not be blind to the fact that it is our political culture that young people are used um, as instruments of either violence or um, they are paid to just show up for numbers and heckle other people uh, down. But that being said, as my two, uh, my colleagues said, it is important to note that young people are not just instruments of violence or instruments to be used during political rallies to show up and show numbers. You know, the other time I saw um, people talking about President Raila when he showed up and there were no people to, 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 to um, be there and show up. And this is, these are young people that show up to this rally. The majority of the people who show up to this rally are young people, unemployed. It's not the members of parliament that show up there. It is not the people who are CEOs in companies that show up to this rallies. No, it is young people. So it is high time we also change the conversation in terms of participation in a quality way. Um, we change the conversation completely to policies and not just showing up for nothing. All right. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to flip this leadership forum in just a bit. Mm -hmm. They're going to have five minutes each to present and speak to the youth on various subjects. Some of them are going to talk about integrity, others are going to talk about peace. Amina specifically said she's not the first one to go, so that means it has to be Rafael. Obono. <laughs> Rafael Obono, as he takes the podium, I want to show you his profile, just bring it up, bring it up on your screen just now. He's a, he's a public policy and youth specialist, he's a diplomat, he's an author as well, and a speaker. Rafael Obonyo is a multi-award winning youth advocate at the national, regional and international levels. He's the author of Conversations About the Youth in Kenya and we'll be delving deeper into that particular, what the findings were at that particular point. He's the co-founder of a number of community and youth-led initiatives including the Youth Congress, a premier youth-led organization right here in Kenya. He has extensive knowledge and experience in public policy, international development political economy, governance, and human rights. Mr. Bonyo is the 2016 Best Communicator in Kenya. That's by our own very daily nation as well. Now his time starts now, five minutes. <laughs> thanks so much, Trevor. It's really uh, great to be on, on this show, and thanks for the wonderful inter and the gracious introduction. I think to, to, to Kenyans, you know, 20, uh, 2017 election is an election like no other, you know. It's one of the most competitive elections that we have since uh, the reintroduction of democracy uh, in this country. It's bound to be charged. Uh, you know, we're already seeing tempers, uh, tempers uh, flaring. But I think we want to remind all Kenyans 
that we all have a role to play, and especially young people, in shaping the outcome. You know, people have talked about peaceful election. It's, it is our, uh, sort of our joint res collective responsibility to ensure a peaceful election. People have talked about credible elections. Of course, we are asking IBC to do their, to play their role, but we must also remember that we all have a role, um, uh, a role to play. Let us look at elections not as a moment for, for violence, an opportunity for violence, but an important moment for ensuring peaceful rotational leadership in this country and a moment to also strengthen uh, strengthen our, our democracy. And I think, uh, like we did say earlier, violence has no space in electoral process, at least not in the 21st uh, century. Politics is a battle of ideas. It's not a battle of uh, physical, uh, physical mind. And so I want to just bring out three key uh, uh, important points. That one, we are all Kenyans. This country belongs to all of us. And uh, none of us, none of the 45 million people is more special than, uh, than the other. We may profess different faiths. Uh, we may belong to different political parties. You know, we may belong to different ethnic groups. But we are all Kenyans. And I think that for us is something that we must never, never forget. Two, I think I want to refuse the narrative that elections come and go. Because election is not an event. The choices we make on the 8th of August will affect us tremendously five years and beyond. So I think anyone moving around telling Kenyans that no, 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 elections will come and go, that is not true. As young people, we need to take elections more seriously. We need to participate. Election is not another Christmas day that will come and pass. So we need to participate morning, uh, meaningfully. And so for that reason, I want to remind all of us that our vote is our voice. Our vote is our power, and we must, uh, we must, uh, we must use it. Uh, and change does not just happen. We must make change to, to happen, and so we must play our role. And for me, I want to also emphasize the fact that our vote matters, our vote is important. We cannot aspire for a better future without us engaging in shaping that better future. And we've been told, and I think it's true, that employment that we're looking for is on the ballot. Quality education that we're looking for is on the ballot. If you're looking for affordable health care, is on the ballot. If you're looking for affordable and decent housing, is on the ballot. And so we must participate uh, in, the, in the electoral processes. And also we must shape our own destiny. You know, the future that we aspire for, the future that we want, will not just fall from the sky. We must do the hard work. And uh, part of that work, hard work, uh, involves, uh, you know, engaging in the electoral process before, during, and even after election. So active citizenship is extremely important. And finally, to leaders, I think people who have offered themselves for various electoral, uh, I mean, elective positions, must, uh, um, must realize that election, or rather leadership, is not just about aspiration. It's not just about position. It's also about um, having a vision wanting to lead people towards a particular, a particular destination. It's also about a goal. And mo most important, it's about service. And so we must see leadership not as an opportunity to accumulate wealth, not as an opportunity to show our might, but as an opportunity to serve people. And so leaders must demonstrate uh, to, to, to Kenyans that they're out to serve and not just to accumulate wealth, and not just to show, to show their might. And finally, I think I just want to remind all Kenyans, and especially uh, young people who form a significant uh, segment uh, of the population, 80% of this country, uh, of the population of this country is below age 35. If you look at the voting block, uh, just IBC released the figures uh, recently, we are over 50%, and we can shape the country that we want. We can move this Kenya from being a good country to a greater and a better country. And we all have a collective responsibility to do that as individuals, as young people, but also as institutions in this country. Thank you so much. All right, impeccable timing at just four minutes and 15 seconds. That's about, that was really great. And I, I, I didn't mention earlier on, Rafael Obonio, in 2016, he was named one of the UN Persons of the Year as well. Also, he's received the 2016 Utumishi Bora Exemplary Leadership award for his contribution to mentorship and people's empowerment we can have that discussion right after this but then again all of them are going to present as we speak you can call in anytime you can tweet me at trevor beach at am live hashtag you can call the numbers that are going through your screen right now narima wako is the next on the podium as she takes on you she's no stranger to you guys you know already she's been here several times narima attained a bachelor's degree in journalism and sociology in 2010 from Jacksonville State University and a master's degree in public administration from the same administration. She's currently the executive director of Siasa Place, which is a youth organization established in 2015, dedicated to collaboratively create an environment that enables youth of Kenya to directly engage with the political mainstream 
in a meaningful way. Nerima, your time starts now. I'll have to echo what Rafael has said this morning. Today I wanted to talk about um, voting and identifying leaders. As much as we as young people might be overwhelmed with all the information specifically from two political parties, it's on our front pages every single day. And we feel like that's the only choice that we have. But is it the most important choice? A lot of times we forget to look at the county assembly, the MCAs, we forget to look at the women rep. Those are the ones who have much more of an impact in our daily lives. So those are the ones that we need to also focus on and identify who have our interest at heart. But not only that, I want to talk about one thing that bothers me completely, and that's corruption. Corruption is a major issue. We repeat it every single day, but I don't think we understand the intensity of it. For instance, a recent research just said that each Kenyan at the moment has to pay 90,000 shillings to pay off our debt. If you're 18, you're finished with high school, how are you going to be paying 90,000 before even you have employment? And we're looking at things where, how am I going to be able to afford that? Even if when we look at food, cost of food is expensive, cost of housing is expensive. I can't even think about getting a car, because quite frankly, I don't know if I can afford one. So those are some of the issues that we need to be concerned about, how our governments are going to deal with corruption. So when we look at developments such as the SGR, or how they flaunt about how they're going to do so much for our infrastructure, are we thinking about how we're going to pay it back? Are we thinking about can we afford it? And sometimes we talk about how much it costs, but do we really look into the specific costs, where it went, and how are they holding it accountable? So for me, in these coming few days, which I'm hoping other young people will listen and take account, is how our leaders are going to deal with corruption. And recently we just saw some documentary about even police officers on the roadside asking for bribes. These are real issues. And the fact of the matter is we have all this corruption because we want to get around our system. I know somebody who lost a car and they went to the court and they're still fighting it in the court four years later. So you look foolish following the law. So those are some of the things and concerns that we need to have. So as much as we have all this funding for youth empowerment, if we continue to channel funding into a drum that has a hole, it is pointless. There needs to be a way to fix that hole. And those are the things that we need to discuss. Thank you. All right. Impeccable timing. And now, last but not least, Amina Mohammed. I think she's ready now. Amina Mohammed <laughs> is a final year law student at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, where she has previously served as the Secretary General of the Kenya Model United Nation and is the current president of the Law Student Society of Kenya. She's the founder of Elimisha Foundation, an organization that aims to enhance literacy and creativity in young people through mentorship and peer learning. Amina, your time starts now. Uh, thank you for having us, Trevor. Um, I think the first thing that I want to discuss, and this is actually in, um, has to do with what we just saw on television, that is the youth as the electorate. Um, first of all, I have to say we live in interesting times. We live uh, in a time in our history where young people are vying for elective positions. We have the first, um, the youngest senatorial aspirant who's 23 years old, Susan, yes. And uh, I think this is due to the conversations that we've had over time um, about young people participating in, 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 in election positions. That's why we have people like Boniface Mwangi, uh, Steve Mbogo. So these are young people taking up positions. So it's really interesting to be alive at this, uh, at this time in our history. But let's not forget that part of active participation in democracy has two parts. It has vying and voting. We have paid a lot of attention to vote, to vying and forgotten about voting. And as Raphael said, the majority of the voters in this country are young people, according to the IABC reports. We form the majority of the votes. We are the biggest voting bloc in this country. However, that has been diluted. That does not hold water anymore. You know, the fact that we are the majority voters, politicians should be scared. They should be falling one after the other, trying to address our, our agendas, that is unemployment, corruption. However, they're not, Trevor. Should we be worried? Yes, we should be worried. They're not taking it serious that we can choose who's the next president of this country. We can choose who's the governor in our different um, areas. We can choose who we want to put in these places just by our numbers if we decide to get, to get off what they're comfortable with that is the tribal 
blocking of voters. They have decided, well, the Ma communities will vote like this, the Kamba nation will vote like this. But how about young people? We become our own tribe for once. We vote, al we vote for issues that we believe in. If we do that, we will address issues that are important to us. She said unemployment is very, is the one of the things that they should be addressing, but they're not. We look at politicians at tri as tribal beings. We look at our political arenas, our discussions through political uh, tribal prisms. If we let we go past this, I think we can do a lot as young people. Let us not look at them like our saviors. We have nothing in common. They drive big cars, I take a matatu. The price of unga, as one said, I don't eat ugali, but the price of mchele is equally as high. You see, that, those are the things that affect me. It does not have to be that we look at them because they come from our communities or they come from our backgrounds. You see, the sense of tribal belonging that we have is very fragile. It is a false sense of belonging, actually, to think just because I am from whatever tribe I come from, I feel like I belong somewhere. It is very fragile that it should not even be an issue when it comes to voting. I should be voting for issues, but no one is telling me that. You see, it is my first time to vote, actually. And, um, <laughs> and I haven't seen IABC come up and tell me, so this is how the electoral process works. This is where you tick. You do not put an X, but no, we are lost to Uhuru Kenyatta was here, Raila Odinga was there, they heckled each other, young people came out. That is what we are reduced to. No one is telling me how I am going to vote. And mo majority of young people are wondering, okay, so we're the majority voters. What's next? How are we going to vote? Who are we going to vote in? As she said, we are left with two options. Do we even know there are eight candidates? I don't even know all their names. I'm hoping I will see the pictures during <laughs> on the ballot paper. But I wish we had put issues there, corruption, unemployment. So for me, as young people, we need to choose our own tribe. Our own tribe is issues. If we do not reduce it to issues, we are doing an injustice to ourselves. And that is what all I have right. to say. Impeccable timing, all of you staying within your time. That's, I didn't even have to use my bell this morning. I think that's a really, that's a <laughs> that's a really good thing. And like I mentioned earlier on, Ms. Mohammed currently serves as a board member of the Kenya Country Support Mechanism of the Global Community Engagement and Resilience Fund. That's the GCERF. I want to read some of your tweets here as they settle in and get their mics on. Roy Odiambo says, political intolerance, youth should know peace comes from within. Do not seek it from without. Otien Ondede says here, everyone must participate in electoral process, not spectate, so said JFK. Interestingly, I'm actually struggling to go through the tweets because some of them are a bit insightful and they, they sort of seem like they have that same mentality that we saw earlier on of tit for tat is a fair game and that's why I'm avoiding most of them because what you're trying to talk about is how the youth can be more involved in a meaningful way and not get into violence and make sure that peace is upheld. Because at the end of the day, it's you and I who suffer when there's chaos in this country. The political elite will probably fly out. They'll be taken care of with bodyguards from miles away from their home. You and I will be on this street. You are a first time voter, yes. but do you feel like these politicians are addressing the issues you'd like to hear? No, that, because, well, they released their manifestos, and I, I, I had an opportunity to read the Jubilee and the NASA, but not every young people will download those manifestos and read. So every day when they take uh, the podiums, they're heckling at each other. They don't even need youth. They don't even need us to heckle at them because they will come up and talk of um, what Jubilee does not do, what Jubilee is not doing. We as the young people, we as the voters, we already know what we don't have. We already know what they're not already doing. We don't need each other to keep pointing. Um, Uhuru saying what NASA cannot do, what they will not deliver, and, the, and, and so on and so forth. So for me, I don't feel like they're, 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 they're representing the issues that they should be. They're talking of numbers, voting blocks, um, reducing the cost of living to the cost of Ugali, and all, and, and I mean, I wish they were addressing my issues. My issues are corruption. My issues are unemployment. There are so many of us who they are, do touch are on yet, that, yes, though, who are yet to. 
they touch it as you're not convinced i'm not convinced i'm not convinced and i wish <laughs> the mainstream media was also giving the the other the seven other to also talk about the same issues maybe my option lies there and it doesn't lie with these two that are always on my screen. Nerima, is that the same feeling? Because we get that statement a lot, especially that the, the media is not giving all the others equal chances, but we keep asking them where they are. And when are they serious, go Nerima? out their campaign, I am absolutely <laughs> serious. I and I'm not speaking on behalf of all the media houses, but I know what goes on in the newsroom. We I always ask them where they are. Campaigning. If there's a campaign season, we will go to them. Uh -huh. But we rarely have feedback. So what you're trying to tell me is like right now they are not campaigning, even though it's like 24 days to the election. They don't. In, they don't invite us to their campaign trails. Okay, me. I'll ask. I'll ask and I'll let you know. But I think that they do, and the media is unfair. Sometimes they are not played as much as the two political big wigs. But just to echo on what Amina has said, like for instance, health. Yeah. Health is an issue for young people. As much as we have NHIF, and it's 500 shillings. You know that 500 shillings is also difficult to come by. Because even buying like chips mwitu is like 20 bob. And that's how people survive daily, on 20 to 50 shillings. Yeah. So when you find young people in Chamas, we're in about five of them. Even me, I'm in like five. And then you're changaing like 1,000 shillings a month to try and get by. How are you going to pay for NHIF? So a lot of young people are not even looking at health because they can't afford it. And then when you look at even the uh, clinics in the county, right now what? Nurses are on strike. Doctors were on strike previously. There's almost no medicine within these clinics. So those are some of the issues that young people have. And it's young people who have, um, you know, young women giving birth or talking about children under the age of five who are in the hospital most of the times. So I've not had that in their manifestos. I haven't. Yeah. And so those are the issues that we're talking about that young people face daily. And our politicians don't quite echo on that. So it means that perhaps we're not a priority to them. To them, we are voting machines. And once the vote is done, see you in five years. <laughs> Rafael, is that the same feeling you get? Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me, I just want to remind uh, young people, and of course, as I echo and identify with the sentiments of both Amina and uh, Anirima, that young people must move away from just being uh, you know, registered voters. We must not just be encouraged to go out and vote. We must know our voting issues. And I think, our, we, I mean, if it is an employment, we must ask ourselves who is giving us a better roadmap to, to, to employment. If it's better health care, if it is better housing and affordable uh, uh, housing, we should ask ourselves what are the voting issues beyond just being numbers. Yeah, I remember during the, the mass voter registration, young people were being asked to go out and register. Uh, they've now registered, they were being asked to go out and verify truly if they're on the voter's roll. They've done that. And now comes the, the, the election day and we're seeing what is happening. Now they're being mobilized just to be part of, the, part of the crowd. I think we need to move beyond just being uh, voters and ask ourselves what are the voting issues. We also need to move away from just being followers, you know, and ask ourselves how are we forcing leaders to lead because we must compel leaders to lead by, for example, uh, they've released uh, both NASA uh, uh, and, and Jubilee and other, other, other political candidates, I mean other, other, other candidates have uh, released their manifestos. I think as young people we need to go through their manifestos and ask ourselves, do they provide the kind of uh, uh, vision? Do they provide uh, the kind of, uh, do they touch on, uh, on our issues and then judge them based on that. I'll be really happy to see people chanting that a certain manifesto does not address, uh, for Very example, uh, unemployment, other than just chanting down a particular candidate. Uh, for me, that, is, that for me is extremely important. And lastly, is I think young people also need to know that there's nothing wrong by supporting a political party or a political candidate. Okay. But the love for a political candidate or a political party should not translate into a hate for other people or other political parties or people who believe in something something different. Okay. You can love what you love without hating what other people mm -hmm. what other people love, and that is democracy. And I think we need to ensure political uh, tolerance. Hold that thought. We have a caller online, Simon from Bungoma. Simon, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Omija. Very good. Nice to hear from you. Good morning, you. panelists. Morning. Go ahead morning. with your comment or question, Simon. Yes, I'm. Um, I want to give a comment on um, how the young people can be streamlined in the area of uh, leadership and uh, especially political participation. Yes. And I go back, Mr. Ombija, down to primary school. Okay. Because the primary school age is the formative age, whereby the young person decides what to do in life as per the information those young people get. Okay. Those ones in secondary and post-secondary 
uh, education, those ones have already taken size and they are looking for anybody who can buy them. They are on, on sale for any ideology because they don't have anything on themselves. In fact, they are looking for money. So okay. what I want to say for primary school is to go down and teach them civic education, teach them about siasa. They know how to interact with one another, one community with another, and on a leadership level so that they, are, they know what to do. And then they will inculcate that in themselves and grow up as Kenyans, as tolerant people. But if they are not uh, taken through Siasa, politics, and governance, and every aspect of the, of, of the leadership of the nation, economy, and all that, they will not be tolerant. They will be intolerant because they'll have taken sight. All right. Look at how these young people marry. They marry okay. from their own tribes, even after university, after first, second, even PhD. They All right, Taiwan. They come the village because they are villagers. They were not uh, socialized. Thank okay. You. All right. Thanks, Simon. You made your point already. And Simon is bringing a very interesting, yes, <laughs> that's a very interesting angle of yeah. civic education. And let me read some of the Twitter feedback here that's coming in. Bonfire, spray, keep it. Says tribal voting is a cancerous tradition that derails our development as the youth. Guys, let's stand up for what's right. John Odande says this year's campaigns are issue based for most of the part. You just have to decide who to believe or trust with your vote. James Olo on Twitter says leadership is about service and vision, not mm -hmm. an opportunity to accumulate wealth. And the last one here, keep to. Tosh says it's a high time youth can start thinking on how they can make their tomorrow than fight for politicians. But I mean, I was, you know, Simon was talking about civic education, how far, because you have seen very learned youth still engaging in the same shenanigans that we see on, uh, on uh, daily television. So is, is this going to help, civic education? Because we, we've tried this before. It's happening as we speak, but we still see the same kind of violence. I think it's the culture that we've cultivated over, over the time. And um, young people, um, when we participate in campaigns or when we participate in the electoral process, when we are active in the electoral process, we are reduced to uh, looking the making the politicians look younger. We show up to these political uh, rallies to either show off our talents, which is good, make your money and go, I believe in that. But will civic education help? No. It has been done over and over again. I think it is high time that we use the platforms that we have. The young people that you're saying are educated or um, yes, I've uh, been exposed further to yeah. just talk our own language. You know, young people have their own language. We have to make this conversation look um, not interesting per se, because I think politics is interesting, but relatable to young people. When the civic education is phrased in a manner to look like, I don't think, so. I don't think how it's been done previously has gotten to us. I think we need to relate to us. And, and you brought up the issue of young leaders and you mentioned Suzanne Silantoy. Yes. But yes. it's the same young people who also put her down by saying that she doesn't have experience. But you see, that's our culture. That We will say this country is not ready for young leaders. That is what we've been made to believe. But if young people more and more come up and say mm -hmm. that is what the society wants you to believe, that is what the old guards and the majority who are above the age of 35, who want to maintain the status quo, want you to believe that is not the issues but if we stand up the people who have different platforms and tell young people you know this is our issue uh, let's address we don't even need to pay s people to come and teach us civic education I think we can do it by ourselves we just need to use the different platforms and talk to each other in a manner that is relatable if we make our issues to be safety on the road the way my tattoos are driven, that is an issue I can relate to. And so and I reduce it to a political aspect and say the decisions, every part of our life is a political decision that was made somewhere. Yeah. Meanwhile, the politicians will have their ways <laughs> yes. open for them when the matatus are the, blocking Yes, so when there's traffic. Theirs will be cleaned up for you them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <So> <laughs> Raphael, I see you want to jump yes, in so on I just wanted to, yeah. to weigh in on uh, on issue of youth leadership. I, yeah. mean, uh, I mean, I am a great proponent of uh, youth leadership. But I've always argued that youth leadership must not just be about age. It must also be about vision. It must be about values. It must be about 
what is it that we are offering that is different from what the older generation mm -hmm. is doing? I mean, if it's just about aspiration and it's, if it's just about titles and position, and now it's even more about um, because of lack of employment, it has also become sort of a, an important occupation for many young people. So if it's just about that, then we are not going to make progress. Mm -hmm. So young leaders who are coming up must also uh, give us a clear vision and uh, they must also uh, show us that they're different from what we've seen uh, in the past. So that is about youth leadership. But about civic education, I want to uh, a little bit disagree with Amina that civic education is not important. And it's unfortunate that we are going into this election without proper civic education. Uh, yet we have so many uh, new, new and young, young voters. I think information is power. When people are informed, they get involved. So I think we must make every endeavor, and uh, Amina says, innovatively, that I agree, innovatively to reach out to, to young people. Because otherwise, the voter apathy will continue rising unless we show young people why is it important for them to engage and to exercise their civic uh, duty. And lastly, it's about uh, tribal voting. I think um, it's discouraging, but I think this is the, perhaps the last election we are seeing uh, tribal mobilization, mobilization along ethnic lines. There's a study that was done recently by East African Institute, and the study reveals that young people are less tribal. Of course, many of us will disagree with that, depending on spaces where we are. Some people say if you go to social media, you'll find a lot. But look at our generation. We are intermarrying. We, are, we don't care where we were born. Most of us don't even have land where we were born. We, we are engaging and interacting with people of different tribes. So, Tribe or ethnic identity is not the dominant identity amongst us. Whoever wants to buy uh, perhaps 2022 and beyond must be more innovative in terms of how you're going to mobilize. And one of the key ways to mobilize will be issues. Mm -hmm. If you do not have issues, it will be very, very difficult for you to, to, to buy or to, to be a leader in this country. Okay. And Nerima, we have both extremes of the youth, those who fight for tit for tat, and then those who are like, I don't relate to these people, so I'll just stay home. How do we bridge that divide? Will civic education help? Yeah, civic education will, because mm -hmm. I have to echo what someone said when he called earlier. Yeah. You know, uh, Socrates was one of the founding thinkers of democracy, and he actually thought that democracy shouldn't be given as a right to all. He thought that it should be a specific group of people and those who are educated. Why? Because he felt that in time, people will not quite understand the importance of voting. Yeah. And so they will be voting candidates not based on issues because it's boring. They'll be voting on candidates based on entertainment. Who does the best theatrics? Who makes the best promises? Who sounds more exciting? And so people will vote for that individual who, quite frankly, might not have solutions to your issues. And so that's what we're beginning to see. Democracy is not a perfect system, but democracy has people who don't quite understand it and without education it will fail so where he mentions that it's something that needs to start in primary absolutely why don't we talk about it in primary school and high school yet as soon as you finish high school you're expected to vote but you're not taught how to identify a leader to vote for so that's an issue okay. and for those who are blocking themselves off we say we switch off they switch off from politics the way they switch off from data or vote on Twitter. Eh? yes <laughs> they just say yeah. 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 in fact i don't yeah. even want to watch news when you start them they're on their phones now yeah. on facebook and twitter yeah. they are not watching the news yeah. okay. those ones we have to engage with them how it's important I mean, it's a fact of life, and it'll be in their face. Okay. Whether they like it or not, it's something that they have to deal with. Because politics I mean, affects all yeah. of us. Before I come to you, we have a call yeah. on. Like, let's yeah. get, I mean, I see you want to jump yeah. in on this. Uh, Osman from Meluak. Good morning, Osman. Morning to you, my bro. Yes, go ahead with your comment or question, sir. Uh, my comments are, this political, but these political uh, aspirants who come and uh, ask for votes during this tenor of uh, uh, campaign, Yes. the main aim is just to get and benefit because mm -hmm. you know you just see only a person coming on the end of the five years coming for votes yes but when he gets opportunity to the if, if one is an mca or uh, an mp or a, a senator yeah. the first time when he goes to office the first three years you don't see even you said so you don't see even okay but uh, when it comes to the end in the office to to me at kabila Alright, Osman. 
so ningependa uh, well, ningependa uh, mavijana yetu wasitumiwe vibaya okay. let them be used correctly sawa sawa Asante, that's Osman from Eluak and he's talking about representation and the misuse of the youth. And we have Bina Maseno on Twitter. She says, how do we change the narrative that majority will always have their way and minority have their say or mm. lost votes? We're privileged this time around we're the majority. Can yeah. we have the right say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, and, and I, I, I agree with, first of all, I have to, to rebut what you said. Um, okay. We right. said, he said, I think civic education is not important. It is important. What I'm saying is, we have to devise other ways innovative to do ways. it. Yes, okay. innovative ways to that do I it. Totally agree if you do not that. relate to young people at this generation, news is told in 100 and 140 characters. Yes. So if, you, if you're not that fast, mm. they keep moving on to the next issues. Mm -hmm. So we have to also to come up with ways to relate to them and tell them politics is important. The price of nail polish, the price of always is a political decision and we f if we do not reduce it to those kind of things we are losing the youth we are we are losing the young people yeah. and he said um, politicians come after 5 years that is what we have done to ourselves uh, and he comes from Eloak where i come from i come from Wajia county and so politicians go there and they live here in Nairobi Polit Wajia politics Mandara politics Waj Garissa politics is played here in Nairobi instead of those counties and you wonder why politicians will go there after five years that is what culturally uh, we've done we need to so move away so you believe away. we have the leaders that we deserve yes <laughs> I think uh, as young people and as citizens of this country, we need to change how we also politic. We cannot always be pointing at our leaders and we forget we put them there. Mm -hmm. If a member of parliament is not performing, call him back. If a governor is not performing, start a motion to impeach. We have means that we can hold our, cities, our leaders accountable. But also if young people and uh, the electorate is not responsible, I guess we have what we deserve. Yeah, Rafa? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> true. And we have uh, leaders. Yeah. You and mostly, yeah, yeah, I know you interact with the youth a lot. I know, I know the first question that always comes up is, do not take the money when you're given money to vote. Yeah. But the youth will always say, ah, sequen me kula lang. Yeah. That has always been an excuse. So how are we going to change that narrative? First is to realize that uh, lead, good leaders don't fall from the sky. Yeah. They come from amongst us. If we are demanding for good leadership, then we must also be good citizens. Yes. I think that's the first thing. Mm. So I think the issue of leadership is important. And this is a leadership forum. But I think the issue of also active and responsible uh, citizenship mm -hmm. is extremely uh, important. So we need also to emphasize, uh, emphasize that. Uh, to young people who are even selling their birthright, which is actually uh, vote, they should know that you cannot sacrifice short-term gains for, I mean, I mean long-term gains because of this short-term uh, gain. If you take 200 shillings today and for the next five years you go hungry, I think it doesn't, it's not wisdom. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So I think as young people, and I get a lot of that because I was born and raised in Korogoshan. So every time I go back there, I always see how young people are saying, ah, let those politicians come. We need to get something from them. And it's never much. It's 200, it's 100, it's 300. And for the rest of the, of the time, for the rest of the five years, they end up complaining. So we must ask ourselves, what choices are we going to make? Are we going to choose to get 200 today and suffer for the next five years? We should refuse, uh, refuse, uh, refuse that. Yeah. And Nerima, in your experience, I know there's this mentality of get rich quick in the young people. In fact, we, you said we are majority more than 50%. And yet, at the same time, more than 50% of the youth are willing to make money by hook mm -hmm. or crook. That is based <laughs> on research. <laughs> true. So what, what kind of a reflection is that? How are we going to make sure this doesn't happen going forward? You know, that, that whole mentality, I always say, I mean, what do we look up to? When, when we look up to our leaders who a lot of them might have corruption scandals and then nothing happens to them and we applaud those who have become successful over a short period of time. We don't question where they've got the finances from. That tells you a lot about our society. I find it difficult that we want young people to be completely different from the apple tree that we're produced from. It cannot be. So there are root causes because even if you look at our education systems, how much cheating was involved? It's just now that Matiange has come, now we're feeling like, oh yeah, we're going somewhere. <laughs> but honestly, what does that mean? It means that young people are learning how to cheat better. They're learning how to perform without having to work that hard. And it's, it's allowed. 
So we have to look at the whole systemic issue that we have as a country and take a look back at our young children. Really, it starts from the children. Mm -hmm. It has to start there. If we do not care about these things, if we do not have um, institutions or bodies that hold people accountable, people are just let loose and free. I'm not even sure those who are vying for political seats right now if they should be. But no one has said anything. But they are there. <laughs> so, so how do you tell a young person that what when you do wrong, you'll get caught? It's bad. For us, we're saying, by the way, if you do wrong, it's fine. Don't you can't get, get away with don't it. Get just don't get, just don't get caught. caught. <laughs> or at don't least get caught. do bad in a large scale. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Still little money, and we still applaud. Millions. We applaud that. And yeah. that's I, just I a think fact. The other yeah. thing, actually, Nerima, uh, is that uh, the older generation, and Nerima alludes to that, the older mm. generation expects the young generation to operate and mm. to act differently. But I, I mean, I'm a believer in education and civic education, but I also know values are not taught. We see mm. if someone he earns 50,000 a month and is driving a Range Rover and he didn't win a lottery, we see that. You know, if someone <laughs> is. But we uh, like the Range Rover that he We, yes. have, we yes. love the Range Rover, but <laughs> we don't see that. And we don't know it. It didn't come from his salary or yeah. her salary. And, and we see that and we want to get that Range Rover the same way they the got it. Way. So I think the older generation, if they want the younger generation to act differently, they must also at least be that positive example. Okay. But to young generation, young people, ourselves, we must know, and uh, I think Thabo Mbeki is the one who says that if we want to make progress, we must rebel against bad habits mm -hmm. and bad ideas of the older generation. Okay. They have certain bad habits, ethnic, tribal mobilization, you know, uh, yes. uh, insane accumulation of wealth, you know, greed and all that. Mm -hmm. We must rebel against that and pick up new habits and better habits and teach them what needs to be done. Okay. Yeah, and I think also that sort of uh, issue of tribal mobilizations, it's, it's false, it's cluster picking. If you if you were to define me and put me in a box and say she's from Wajia County, she will vote like this. No, you're wrong. I was born in Kirinyaga County. I speak better Kikuyu than most Kikuyus. So what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> My best identity is being Kenyan. So don't introduce me into one box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, also when you when you when you're addressing the issues that are going on in our society, I think we have moved away from trusting our institutions mm -hmm. and that is where our solutions lie. Yeah. We need to start trusting our institutions, we need to empower our institutions, we need to support our institutions. When uh, the <laughs> Corruption and, Com and Ethics uh, Com Commission comes out and says these are the people we are investigating, can we say we are giving you two months for results? We move to the, from the, to the office of the DPP and say, we need to see prosecutions. Actually, we escort those same people being investigated. <laughs> yes. Chant, yes. For them yes. on their behalf. All praises. Yes. Yeah. In the same spirit <laughs> that we showed to NASA and Jubilee rallies, can we show up to the office of the DPP and ask for results? Mm. You're telling us you're investigating, you're telling us you're prosecuting. We've never seen any person mm. being prosecuted. Okay. Let me, let me hold on that thought. We have a call online. Joy, good morning. Good morning, Trevor. How are you? Very good. Go ahead with your comment or question, Joy. Uh, I, I'm not a youth, I'm 42. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I've, I've seen values that were instilled then yeah. when we were growing up. I saw a, a model uh, election of a primary school in, in the coast. Yes. And uh, these, these kids were, were, were bribing others with sweets and all that so that they could vote for others in an election in school. Yeah. So I can imagine these values that we were taught we are not even instilling to the youth. And then you look at our county development. We are building universities, and, and, and uh, we go to primary school, we go to high school, we go to the same universities that we, we, come to, we, we, we went to in our locality. What are we really encouraging? It's tribalism, and this yeah. is what will grow up with you. So this civic education, really, that we are instilling is the same thing in 20 years, 30 years, that you'll see our youth doing the same things you are doing right now. So yeah. when we talk of leaders of the future, then what, are, what values are we instilling now? So right. I think we need to look at even our whole education system as, and as the, the Kenya Career Development are doing it, maybe we think of even how we can integrate communities and, and that I didn't come from Meru and I grew up in Meru and I marry in Meru and everything I do is in Meru. Yeah. I think we have a problem as a society right now. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. Thank <laughs> Joy bringing in a very interesting perspective there. But Nerima, Amina brought it up, credibility of institutions. It's the same institutions that we have. If my favorite politician says that ruling was flawed, then I don't trust that institution because we've seen it with the judiciary and intimidation left, right, and center. So how far does this responsibility fall with the citizenship rather than the, other, the, rather than the leaders themselves? 
because we have the institutions and also some of them have not given us reason to actually trust them. Yeah. I know, you know, it's, it's so interesting because even as CSR police, we're always being asked, what side are you on? It seems like in Kenya, you have to, you be, have on to be on a side. side. If, you don't, if you don't pick a side, someone will put you on a side for you. <laughs> you know, and <laughs> we saw that last week. Yeah. yeah, we saw that last week with the court ruling with IBC. People are already, you know, picking Taking sides. Out. And so it's very difficult when we completely always mix our politics with reason. Like, we cannot reason forward or unobjectively. There has to be a political uh, intuition or something in the background influencing our decisions. And so that's what makes it scary because you begin to wonder whether we do have independent bodies. And the reason why, quite frankly, our elections are so expensive is because we don't trust each other. It's all about systems. We're not trusting our own people to count our own election. It's either that side who's doing it, it's that side who's doing it. So perhaps as Kenyans, we have issues. We do have issues with trust, as yeah. Amina yeah. has mentioned. Yeah. We do. And Amina, you've thought about this, and you're the one who brought it up before I bring in Raphael. We had the president himself saying the institutions <laughs> So the institutions, we don't have, we, there's no lack of laws or institutions. Yes, we have sufficient laws actually to address corruption, to address all the things that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. But we have this culture of undercutting ourselves. We sabotage ourselves. When uh, we come up with a new commission for the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, we pick them up one by one depending on who we think belongs to this political party or who we think belongs to this other political party or on their tribal basis. We scrap off the IABC commission, we bring up another one. We start there again, we start bringing it down. But you see, we are playing into their hands, we're playing into the political hands. They want us to propagate their own agendas. They want us to not trust in our institutions. They want us to question every decision that public institutions that does you know we have to move away from we have to move away from questioning our institution look at it yes we have to look at their integrity i'm not saying that we don't but we have come so far and this is the first constitution that we have independent uh, bodies we cannot also ex expect them to be perfect we should say we have come this far yeah. we are this flawed we are working on it but can we just get this done can we take one step? We have independent bodies that we've never seen their results. What <laughs> I, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, we have so many uh, corruption scandals. Has anyone been prosecuted? Has Teriyako to be called prosecuted anyone yet? Are we, is, sh we should be telling the judiciary, okay, they've done their job, he's done his job, we're waiting for the decision here at the judiciary. But if we keep undercutting all these institutions, we're playing ourselves. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I think just to add, we need strong institutions. It has been said that we do not need strong men, we need strong institutions. Mm -hmm. I think it's the former president of the U.S., Obama, who said that. Yeah. That Africa needs strong institutions, not, not strong men. Really. But I'm a, I'm a believer not just in strong institutions, but also in leadership of those uh, institutions, leaders in those institutions. Yeah. So I think institutions must not ch just serve uh, certain political interests, they must serve Kenyans. They must do the right thing for the development and the progress of, of the Kenyan uh, of the Kenyan uh, Kenyan people, I think for yeah. me that is very very uh, uh, important. But we also must get the right people in those uh, in those institutions, yeah. uh, so that those institutions can make development. You've seen in Brazil, the former president mm -hmm. of uh, Brazil, yeah. he just got uh, he's been nine charged years. and sentenced nine years in prison. I mean, I'm not saying we should also follow that suit, especially if <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm saying, I mean, of course, we should not just. Uh, uh, arrest and uh, and and uh, sort of um, jail people for the sake of it, yeah. but we must also see action. I was reading, I've read the the various uh, the, the, the uh, manifestos, and I was reading the the Jubilee uh, manifesto, yeah. and uh, there is an interesting part. And I was arguing this that Jubilee's manifesto is full of figures, you know, numbers. They have so many numbers, and one of it is uh, this one that uh, we have 361 cases in court. I said, mm. what if there are 360? What if there are 60 cases? What people want to see is not the number of cases in court, is the action that is being taken, is that people pay for their, for their misdeed and misaction. So yeah. for us, that is very, very important. So institutions must act and must serve Kenyans. No, so before I bring in Nerima, and uh, Joyce spoke well, about well, values well. instilled in us when we were young, but we have Usha Oze Kandatel Doll. She's with me here going through all your feedback on Twitter. Usha, are you a first time voter? Um, <laughs> please say yes, so, so that I stop looking awkward. <laughs> yes, I actually am a first-time voter. I'd like to know what you think. Are your issues being addressed? 
I don't think so, not in the least, not at all. Um, I was actually, I actually do, unfortunately, fall until very recently under the group of I won't vote because there won't be a difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, but of course, very valid. Sorry? C civic education. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know. <laughs> civic education, of course, yes. Right. What, what are they saying on Twitter? Um, they're saying a lot. Some of the yeah. things, uh, this, uh, it's actually been a daunting task having to select uh, specific tweets because, yes, um, today there have been tweets that I wouldn't read in my house, let alone on air. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, there have also been um, amazing tweets or tweets that we really need to look into. So those are the ones I've selected. Remember, if you still haven't gotten your comment through hashtag AM Live NTV, that is how you can reach us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. So straight to it, we have Proudly Kenyan who says, um, forget the youth, our leaders are a reflection of ourselves. Um, so, I mean, I think we have already exhausted I think we have already exhausted the concept of um, youth are not so much voting their leaders in. But I don't know about this this specific one. Like, are they in terms of corruption and all that? Are they are they really a reflection of us? Do you think it starts with the youth in terms of how they they start leading once they get to uh, power? Uh, Raphael, perhaps. Sorry, say that again. So we have proudly Kenyan who yeah. says, uh, forget the youth, our leaders are a reflection of ourselves. So now he's moving off from the topic of um, youth don't want to vote. It's about the actual leaders once they get into power and what they do in terms of corruption, in terms of not addressing our issues. So do you think that's true? Does it begin from the youth? Uh, are they are leaders really a reflection of us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like we did say, leaders come from, from citizens. And if we are not good citizens, then we cannot expect to have, uh, to have good leaders. So citizens must demand for good leaders, but they must also be good, uh, good citizens, yeah. Yeah, Nerima, on the same question that Ushai was raising. Absolutely, I agree. I don't know why we always get shocked, because yeah. we're the ones who put them there, to be frank with you. And like I was mentioning earlier, I mean, what do we encourage? You know, we, we say something else and then we do something else. So we need to stop being hypocritical as a people. Yeah, we plant cactus and we want to reap mangoes. <laughs> and also, never I think <laughs> no. we live in a society that celebrates uh, wrong things. Yeah. We celebrate people making money really fast. We celebrate grades. We don't celebrate the process, yeah. the hard work that people, uh, young people put, put to be where they are. So if we also change our culture of celebrating the wrong thing, I think we'll also have a better society. Mm. Yes. Right. It starts with us. As I said, we put them there. They're a reflection of who we are. Yeah. Usha. <laughs> right, so we also have. <laughs> we also Usha, have do, you, do you agree? Do you agree with that? I um, don't seem to agree with what they say. To some extent, yes. I mean, Trevor, I am yet to meet someone who. Okay, I have met people, but yeah. one or two, and some of them you're like, are you sure? Who say that um, they never ever give bribes. I mean, if you're stopped by a cop in traffic. <laughs> it's just simpler, you know, and I, you read articles about people who say, I'm so proud because I followed the whole process, it took me seven months, and you're thinking, seven months? <laughs> Is it really worth it to go and say, I am a Kenyan who hasn't bribed, you know? So yes, indeed, of course, wait, I mean, wait, I think... I, I fall in the category of yeah. a Kenyan who hasn't bribed. Wow. I had to apply for an ID <laughs> thrice <been> three times <laughs> to get it, because I wasn't ready to pay money to I've get an ID. I've been out and about <laughs> <in> the street, <laughs> city council yeah. or something. <laughs> But you know, I'm not in the category of driving big cars and parking in yeah. the city council. I'm really into a tattoo. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, our systems are horrible. I'm yeah. pretty sure that if we had some sort of system where if you're pulled over by a police officer and you did something wrong, and I can pay with my visa there and they immediately, give you a ticket. Yeah, yeah. I yes. will do it. Give me yeah. the ticket and let me do it. But as soon as you start talking about court, then it's, due, it's Friday like today, and then it's due, your case is on Monday. I mean, <laughs> people are just like, you know what, forget it. Me, I'm just going to give this bribe because yeah. it's faster to deal with. And yeah. that's the problem. The system is just yeah. too slow. And there's a police officer who told me it's biblical to hurry the process. So to Manizana Kabarabara, <laughs> <laughs> I think Matthew, Matthew could yeah, do something. Yeah. Uh, Raphael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How I do mean, we change that? Because the, the red tape and bureaucracy is where people are trying to avoid. I mean, uh, you don't want to go to court. It has it's to come long. from both supply and demand side. Yeah. You know, uh, we must make sure that our institutions are professional, are efficient. You know, you don't want to spend seven seven months following up one case. You know, yeah. you might lose your job in the process of trying to follow the right thing. It's very, very, it's very expensive. But I think it's also, uh, freedom has a price, we are yeah. told. 
uh, if we want the right things, we must also be ready to make, uh, make the sacrifice. You know, refuse to give that bribe and go through the process, I think it is extremely important. So we need those positive examples, and we need to keep telling those stories of someone who refused. Like Amina. But yes, yes, like Amina. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think light must also shine to read uh, 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 us of the, of the darkness that is there. We can't be talking about darkness all the time. But I think there's also a misconception that the system is flawed. We believe, we oh, expect our system to be flawed. Actually, it is easier to go and pay fine at the judiciary than to, play, to pay a police officer. I know you will pay less, but you just, it's easier as walking to Makadara Law Court, cash off his pay and go. You haven't been arrested. No, 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 no. Amina Amina is a lawyer, that's why she's saying Amina is a lawyer. I have been arrested, I have been arrested. But it's as easy as walking to Makadara Law Court, cash off his go, depending on where you come from. There's no okay. process. You just <laughs> accept and go. You have, you have people standing out there like hawks. Yeah. <laughs> they can identify what have you come for. In fact, some of them are like police officers. It's Let me just see your names. <laughs> and then they come in many more hands. Actually, many more hands. Kunani, what's the problem? What are you saying? Utenda uku, utenda. I mean, I don't disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't disagree. It's cheap to pay police officers. What I am saying is, we don't have that culture of strengthening or believing in our institution. We expect to be that there is a queue at Milimani or there is a queue at whatever court you come from, yeah. so you want to escape that. But I mean, is, but in, that, you, is in that expectation coming from out of experience? What no, people that is have expectation. That is, yes, yeah, it is yeah. coming from experience. So I think unless and the fact like that Narima we've said, propagated sometimes this. If you're arrested on Friday, you do hey. know you're going to stay. Yeah, yeah and they ha actually, they, they, they hire. you will pay bail and move on. Yeah. Whoever yeah. the higher you, you go, the more the mouths, the more the hands that demand. So the, the bribe yeah. will even be bigger. So you'd rather cut it down. Yeah, you'd rather cut it down. Instead of paying <laughs> 20 but you see, this, is, but this is the culture that we've created, and this is what student uh, primary school kids, when they come out, this is what they will take over because that is what we believe in. That is what we have accepted, and that is our culture. But if we move out and say, you know, it's as easy as going to Makadara, don't pay this guy, go to Milimani, pay. That is the culture that we need to propagate more, and these are the things that we need to. Uh, tell our society okay. if civic education is reduced that is also civic education <laughs> believing in our institutions <laughs> all right we shall <laughs> another topic of yours is just broke fire on <laughs> the studio, but i'll let you go on with it <laughs> first of all may i just say amina is must be a good luck charm the next time i need to do anything in the police station yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go with her, go with her. <laughs> i'm the going lawyer with her. Her. <laughs> Because right, Kenny, she's they say? speaking about systems I've never heard of in this country, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it's very hopeful, of course, if things like There's that hope. do happen. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, okay. we also have Winnie who says, I agree, we have exactly what we deserve. We don't care much for ideology. So very defeatist approach, which actually is, I think, a bigger uh, percentage of the youth feel that. Like, I mean, you know, who cares about ideology? Uh, we have Kim who says, uh, we the youth are masters of double speak. We should stop condemning tribalism by talk and act against corruption. And this is really extremely true. And I think it's been said in this discussion that um, when it comes to, for example, I mean, if, if, if voting was, was on the premise of Twitter, for example, those leaders would be scared because Kenyans go all out on Twitter. They will say all the wrong things that these leaders have done. But when it comes to voting, when it comes to actually doing something about it, it's completely yeah. different. And I think that's, that's a part of the problem. It's getting these people from Twitter to the polls. <laughs> that's <laughs> the art of double speak. Yeah, and Raphael, have you, have you dealt with that before? The, the, the art of double speak where youth say one thing but do something completely different. Oh yeah, different. totally, totally. Yeah. I mean, when you see the way young people rant on Twitter, on social media platform, how things are not working, yeah. uh, you'd think they're going to take action. But uh, they don't move beyond agonizing to organizing because I think it's very very important for us to move from just agonizing to start organizing to move away from aspiration to action yeah. I think uh, we don't do that we complain about corruption we are the first one to in, first ones to engage in uh, in corruption we engage, we talk about bad leadership when we are given a chance to lead we become we follow the same same foots, uh, footsteps do you know the national assembly that we have is the youngest in the history of this country the Senate that we have is the second youngest Senate in the world and the first, uh, I mean, the, the youngest uh, Senate in, the, in, uh, in Africa. But the good story ends there because if you see the way those young politicians, those youthful leaders behave, it's not different. They engage in ethnic mobilization. They don't do IBM issue-based mobilization, you know. Yeah. They're the same old, same old. So why do we complain about 
bad things, yet when we are given a chance, we don't do the right thing. So Nerima, where is the missing link here? Because you'd, you'd think that if people can tell what the problems are and they are expressing it on Twitter, then they would know what the solutions are as well. Yeah. But they just go ahead and do the direct opposite. You know, Twitter is easy because those are keyboard warriors. It's, <laughs> it's easy for you to just pick up your phone and do something. But then when it comes to the action of getting out yeah. and, you know, you have to first have the, the tenacity just to be so passionate about it for you to just take time out and do that. And we're not there. Yeah. But as far as um, Kenya and our people, I think we need to take a look at our history and be frank and honest with one another. Have we ever been united? Because when we talk about our history from independence, let's the be Mau Mau frank. We were. Yeah, we will talk about like specific tribes being uh, in the front line when it came to our independence and fighting colonialists. But we forget to also focus on other tribes, perhaps in the coast, or other tribes who had their own leaders as well. Then they had their own challenges. Our history overshadows other tribes, yeah. and so we almost forget them. We're not just five tribes, but we'll talk about the big five. How many others are there? As if they don't exist in this country. As if this country doesn't mean as much to them as it means to the big five. So we have to look at how we are teaching our young, our history, and then from there, changing that narrative. Because as soon as you begin to talk as a country as being run and governed by specifics, then of course people are going to feel ostracized and it's going to be more and more difficult to feel united as a one nation and one flag. And I always say this, the only time where I feel really patriotic is when we're in sports and we yes. win. Yeah. And I hear our national anthem and I'm like, yes, for our rugby team, our athletes. But anything else, I, I don't know. It I don't know. <laughs> Amina, is that the same feeling you have? <laughs> yes. And um, how do we bridge that gap then? I think Start getting youth to take action and in the right way, not the kind of action we saw that tit for tat. <laughs> tit for tat is yeah, a fair yeah. game. Yeah. I think the disconnect is the type of conversations that we have in the uh, mainstream media and when we even have forums. Those conversations are not tailored in a way that changes our perspective as Kenyans or young, or young Kenyans as well. And the leaders we have, and I said we have to stop pointing at our leaders, they hold the same sort of conversation. So we need new voices that come up and say, uh, and use their different uh, places in society to change the narrative, as she said. Yeah. We need to come up with conversations that address um, the Kenyan values of who we are. And we have very beautiful values. It is not, it's unfortunate that our values have been reduced to our tribes and what um, that tribe lives in and what they do and how they live their lives. Yeah. But if we change the narrative to this common values that all of us have from Mombasa to Ajia to Kisumu to, to, to different places, I think we can move forward. It's just because we have picked and we have decided to change the conversation to how it suits these leaders. And these are the people with voices. You should see your televisions every day. This, they're the same people, and they have the same stories. Yeah. But we have forgotten the people who have the right narratives, the conversations that we need to, to nurture in, uh, in our society. So I think that's the disconnect. Okay. You will say one thing on Twitter, but when you get home, the reality hits you. And you say, where I come from, we vote along clan lines. Forget about tribe lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. You yeah, say, yeah. <laughs> you say yes, but yeah. I want to be democratic. I want to give everyone an opportunity. But where I come from, the wazers have decided. This is how we do it. The wazers have decided who I will vote for. So what's democracy for me? It is something out there. It is not where I am. Okay. But young people don't know they have a choice. They will just take the decision that uh, the wazers under a tree have decided. So this is the next governor. This is the next member of parliament. And that is who they will go to vote. In, uh, uh, du uh, during the August 8th election. But if an alternative voice comes and says, they don't hold the power, the vote is yours, decide how you're going to vote. You don't have to sustain the status quo. You don't have to vote along cl clan lines. Just do this differently, you know. Yeah. Occupy your space, be yeah. heard. These yeah. are the conversations that we need to, uh, I think, strengthen, or yeah. the voices that we need to strengthen. Yeah, yeah, and, and for me, I think it's just to remind uh, the youth and fellow young people that we cannot sleepwalk to greatness you know <laughs> it takes hard work i mean it takes sacrifice we have to make a choice uh, it takes effort you know we cannot just like i said aspire for a better future and do nothing to get to that uh, that be, uh, be, a be better future and yeah. two i think we need to write our own story i mean the terrible story of 
uh, Kenya being tribal, you know, uh, leaders being greedy, leaders being corrupt, has been told. We need to tell our own story as a new generation. Mm -hmm. I think we must provide a new vision and tell a, tell a new story. Mm -hmm. But uh, three, I think we also need to be the change that we are looking for. Yes. You know, many Kenyans point fingers, but we do not ask ourselves, what am I doing to, to, to realize that change? Because we are the change. Uh, change does not wait for the next person or next time. It is you. And uh, it does not, you don't have to wait until one day you are president or you are a governor mm. for you to provide, uh, provide leadership. I think Mary Robinson, the first uh, female president of Ireland, is once said that change begins in small places closer home. You know, uh, back at home, you know, in schools, in our own little, little spaces, that is where we should start inculcating and effecting change. Okay. So this thing of someone imagining that I'll, I'll make Kenya great the day I become president or I'll make the constituency great the day I become member of parliament, that will never happen. You because you will be you up there yeah. what you are down here. If you are stealing mm -hmm. from us, Kenya uh, we'll coins here, mm -hmm. when we elect you up there, you'll start stealing notes from okay. us. If you're stealing sugar from us, a, a, a spoon of sugar from us, when you're down here, when you elect, you'll start stealing uh, sacks of sugar. So okay. you will be up there what you are down here. So start down here to be that change that you want to see. Okay, Usha, today your people are on fire, and I know you still have more feedback coming from them, but I'm still a bit ah. curious, Usha. I mean, you said that you, until very recently, you're the kind who said that they're not going to vote. So what changed your mind exactly? Um, well, working in a media house. Maybe. <laughs> 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 you, should, uh, you should bring people here. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> means that by default, yeah. I actually have to watch all the news <laughs> and all the interviews and all the lives. And so, yes, of course, I think um, civic education to me came by default, should I say. Yeah. So yes, of course, a, a lot of the valid points which have actually been raised here again, which is that, um, for example, um, fine, maybe uh, um, the presidential, because a lot of a lot of youth are feeling hopeless about this, the presidential candidates. But then that's not all. You know, when people think elections, that's all they think, presidential candidates. But there's so much more. There's your MCA, there's your woman, woman rep. And those are the people that are going to make changes mm -hmm. to you. So um, yes, there is, of course, that. And then there is the concept of um, if you don't vote at all, all, then I think you, then you indirectly vote in the person that you didn't want in the first place. Okay. So, <laughs> so yes, that is what changed my mind. All right. What else are they saying online? Um, we have Roy who says. Youth should know peace comes from within. Do not seek it from without. That's true. Youth, uh, peace does start with us. Uh, we have Shadi who says, the politicians will respect us, the youth, once we vote as a block, issue based away from tribalism. We have Odwar who says... Um, Say it again and again till our society learns to make wise decisions to improve our nation, to make it better. I think this is true. This is a conversation that we keep to need. We need to keep having over and over mm -hmm. again. We also have um, Caleb who says uh, we should create a new tribe of youth. I actually like this tweet. I think it's one of my favorite. <laughs> we should create a new tribe of youth where there is no corruption. Yeah. We have John Gidanga who says uh, political tolerance is crucial for the sake of peace. Youth should shun politicians who are bent on inciting them to violence. Yeah. We have Shadi who says let's be keen as youth who we vote in as our MCA because this, con this country representative affects us directly. We have Proudly Kenyan who says young people are a voting machine. Let youth vote in a way that Kenya will be proud of. We have John who says politicians are not our saviors. They should not hold Kenyans at ransom by false entitlement. This country belongs to all of us. We also have Edson who says intolerance is itself a form of violence and an obstacle to the growth of a true democratic spirit. Um, James who says this should go without saying effective political leadership can inspire hope and help Kenya prosper. And finally we have Actually, that seems to be about um, all the tweets mm -hmm. that I managed to load up. But of course, the conversation does go on online and well in your small circles, I hope, until <laughs> the general elections and even after and even beyond. So AM Live and TV, that is how you can get us, Trevor. Thanks, Usha. Thanks for all that and for spicing up the debate. We'll get back to you in just a bit. And I want to give you closing remarks really fast. And I mean, I'll start with you because the issue of tribe of youth, which is Usha's favorite quote today, is you're the one who actually brought it up. So how do we achieve this as we wind up? Is it that we focus on the same issues that affect us? Because somebody once told, I, I heard Dr. Ngumi saying that if we are waiting for manifestos and they're being launched a, a month to the elections, so what have they been campaigning on all this time? <laughs> 
They've been gathering along <laughs> tribal lines. They've been calling each other, come, let's gather around here and start a fire. But yes, uh, I think as young people, and I said in the morning, we need to come up with our own tribe. There's that uh, research that was done by the, Insti the East African Institute, and it said clearly, young people are not tribal, and that's true. Majority of my friends have even gone out of their way to learn other languages and yeah. speak other languages, so we are not tribal, but the system has reduced us to being tribal. It is the way our cult it is how our politics is conducted on a day-to-day -day basis, and I wish we could uh, just move away from that and say we are going to be who we are because we are not tribal. We are going to use the numbers that we have and vote based on issues that affect us directly. We cannot cry fall every day. I think it's an it's an opportunity for us to. Uh, go out and vote and vote for issues that affect us directly be kenyan first i think that is what is very important to us yeah. if you're kenyan first then you will worry about the peace of the, the next person you will worry about um, after election how will our country be because life does not revolve around uh, voting you will worry about our economy you will worry about mm -hmm. our reputation out there so if you're kenyan first i think that is a solution be believe in something greater than yourself believe in something that is greater than your tribe because your tribe is very fragile it is a false sense of belonging but being kenyan and believing that this is my country this is my home my decisions will outlast me is more important yeah, all right yeah. Rafael. yeah I, I think just to I mean, as a way of closing, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, across the country, and we, I, and I'm sure my fellow panelists have interacted with young people across the country, and you realize that young people aspire for better, you know, better for self, better for their families, better for their communities, better for their country. But we must realize that that won't just happen. It requires action. And I think as young people, we must take that bold step and do the right thing you know if it is ethnic uh, negative ethnicity that is weighing us down i think we should put it asunder if it's uh, corruption that is making us not uh, get that better we should put it if it is bad leadership but we must uh, we must take action and two i think we must refuse to be voting machines i mean this thing of just looking at youth in terms of numbers is dangerous i think we must see ourselves as uh, people who can influence and make change and for that to happen we must ask ourselves again what are the voting issues if you don't see your voting issue, I think I will agree with young people who are saying, I won't vote. If truly they're seeing there's no change that is going to happen in terms of, if these leaders are not discussing uh, unemployment, yeah. if these, these leaders are not discussing, you know, things like UNGA, then we, we have no business, uh, business voting because we cannot be voting, uh, voting machine. And finally, I think the leadership that uh, come forth and come forward inspire hope and inspire people to come up and, uh, and vote. And... I, I sympathize, of course, with many young people who are saying there's no difference amongst the many leaders who come up. But that challenges other people who think they can offer an alternative to come up because we people keep saying politics is a dirty game. Yeah. But if we do not have the right leaders coming up, the right people coming up, then we will continue uh, voting for these uh, bad leaders. So good people, uh, siasa players, and uh, you know, in schools and institutions, we must encourage these people who can provide the right vision, who can provide the right values, and who can take us to that destination where we want to go to come up. All right, Nerima, closing remarks. Um, as a country, we, we honestly have to stop being individual based because we will break. I mean, how much greed can we have until what? There's no country at all. And so it worries me, and it's something that we do need to educate to our young, that for the better good of the whole country to be able to have a prosperous and peaceful country, we all have to work at it. And the whole thing about voting as um, youth as a tribe, my only issue with that is that the fact that we're all going to age, and then once you get out, because <laughs> youth being a youth is transient. Yeah. You're not going to be a youth forever. We need the Kenyan tribe. We are hoping. Yeah. We, need, we, need we need the Kenyan, Kenyan tribe. tribe. Yeah. The Kenyan yeah. tribe. The youth like, tribe, yes, but the Kenyan tribe. Yes, because at the end of the day, this is our country. And it's the only one we have. Yeah. So we cannot even play around with it. And so I think that people just need to take it seriously about the people that they're choosing to represent them. All right. That's a great place to live it. I want to thank you for making time today. Amina Mohammed, the president of the Law so Student Society of Kenya. We have Rafael Obonio, public policy and youth specialist, a diplomat as well, an author and a speaker. And finally, Nerima Wako, she struggled to wake up. But she's the executive director <laughs> yeah, of Siasa Place. Yeah, really. I'm never messing with Siasa again. At least, <laughs> at least she made it I on made time. It. Yeah. <laughs>